Assalamu alaikum. It's good to be back with you all. Um, we just got some new Qurans at the Interfaith Center that I work at. And it's interesting that I didn't realize how much people wanted to just, even non-Muslims, just pick up a Quran and look. Um because we have a variety of Qurans there now. But what we do know about the Quran, there's nothing accidental in the Quran. That every word, every letter, it expresses the divine speech of Allah. And in the Quran, it's very interesting that Allah mentions water many, many times. And there's so many prophets that their story is intimately intertwined with water. So you have Noah and the ship. You have Joseph thrown into the well. You have Moses it's put into the river. He's fetching water from the well. Uh, there's the parting of the sea. He meets Khidr at the junction of the two bodies of water. Uh, and there, there are other, Hagar and the discovery of Zamzam. Um, Ayub, when he was ill, was instructed to strike the earth with his foot and fresh healing water emerged. Uh, Eunice was cast into the sea and swallowed by a whale. There's a lot, there's many other examples. And with the messenger of Allah, there's several incidents relating to water. There are miracles associated with water. Um, Allah revealed Surah al kafar uh, describing a river in paradise that was given to the prophet, peace be upon him, and his ummah. Water emerged from his fingers as a miracle and quenched the thirst of the companions on a very dry and hot day. So water, purity, cleanliness, purification, physical purification, spiritual full, uh, purification, they're important aspects of the deen. One of the earliest set of verses revealed to the heart of the prophet are the following, Bismillah rahman rahim O you wrapped up, arise and warn, magnify your sustainer and purify your garments. And the scholars of uh, Quran commentary, they say that purifying garments also it refers to purifying the self from shirk, from from worshiping other things, and that it's although it's addressed to the prophet peace be upon him, it's really meant for all of us. It's meant for the ummah, and of course the pure garments is literal as well. And not long after this verse was revealed, <clears throat> the angel Gabriel came to the prophet, peace be upon him, and, and instructed him on how to make wudu and prayer, which in turn, the prophet, peace be upon him, taught the ummah. So, um, tahara, ritual purification, was one of the very first rituals taught by the prophet, peace be upon him. And we're, we're guided, we're pointed toward purity and cleanliness on so many levels physical, spiritual, inward, outward. Each of the five pillars concern purification. The shahada purifies the heart, it strengthens it. It they are fine pure words that, that purify our heart from idolatry. Salat it, it it involves physical purification, wudu, purity of body, clothes, place of prayer. And the prayer helps purify your heart. And it helps to wash away, wipe away sins. Fasting is a purification. And pain zakat. Linguistically, it means purity, growth. And it can purify the heart from greed and hypocrisy. And it helps nourish our soul. And hajj is not incomplete, is, is incomplete without avoiding staying pure from doing certain things from intimacy sinning 
from unjust disputes. So if we look to other rulings in the Sharia, we find that they're all for the purpose of obtaining purification and cleanliness, either physically or spiritually. Purification mentioned in the Quran, various forms of purification. The people of paradise get a pure drink. The people of purity attain Allah's love. Um, and these commands from God, they're not intended to burden us. They're intended to purify us. Uh, God describes the people of the Masjid as those who love purification. And the prophet, peace be upon him, he would keep his outward uh, appearance clean. And he would tell others to do this, like bathing regularly, washing hands before eating, cleaning his blessed teeth. These are all sunnahs of the prophet, peace be upon him. And he would enjoin people, he would encourage people to be clean and warn against being dirty. Um, Allah is goodly and loves what is goodly clean and loves cleanliness generous and loves generosity so purity is very com com comprehensive and Islam is a way of purity the prophet uh, prayers and peace be upon him said Islam is clean so keep yourself clean for none will enter paradise except those who are clean. So learning the fiqh of purification, it's it's good to review this and inshallah increase our presence as we are preparing for prayer. So approaching will do as this also a spiritual practice. It can help our heart to be cleansed and illuminated so washing the hands we can intend that our hands are purified of the sins that they may have done rinsing the mouth we can intend that our our mouth it will be free and purified of harmful words profane speech washing our faces we can intend that we submit our essence that we can uh intend that we purify our, our our gaze and what we look at washing the feet we can intend to purify ourselves from any inappropriate things that we've walked to to participate in so with awareness and contemplating these meanings we can remind ourselves that the outward is supposed to reflect the inward that cleanliness and purity are not just ex external, but they also must be internal. Ya Allah, please purify us from every trait that distances us from closeness to you. Ya Allah, please forgive the believing men and women. Please bless this community and bless us all with patience and perseverance and purity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.